Hello, I'm Zainab, a research executive at Gallup Pakistan, and today I'm joined by Roja Sheikh, who's also an RE at Gallup, and we'll be continuing our discussion of the Pakistan Demographic and Health Survey. Today, um, our topic is polygyny, and we'll be looking at trends from over the past 30 years. Um, defining polygyny, it is when a marriage of a man to more than one woman. So um, this survey will be having questions that have been answered by women who have more than one co-wife or whose husband has more than uh, one wife. And then we also have responses from men in this. And again, these are men who are in polygynous relationships. Uh, so generally, um, overall, we do see that polygyny, there is very mixed reactions and mixed um, patterns that we see that we'll be discussing in today's video where um, it doesn't necessarily increase or decrease across demographic variables to the extent that we've seen other marriage related um, factors change or we've seen trends emerge. Um, here, it's a lot more nuanced and maybe um, we'll gain more insight into the cultural and the social factors that could be contributing to that. So um, if we just look at very general trends to begin with, we see that the percentage of women um, aged 15 to 49 who have more than one co-wives, and if we look at the averages of the time trend over the years, we see that it has on average decreased from 1990 to 2017. Um, in 2012 and 2017, between that time, it stayed uh, more or less the same with very minor variations, but we do see that um, there was almost a decline of around 1% between 1990 to 2012. And I think that does reflect just very general overall change in perceptions and priorities um, internationally and also nationally. Um, we compare that to men who have more than one wife. And according to men, again, we see that it has declined over the years too. We don't have data for 1990 for this, but we see that from 2012 to 2017 declined from 3.4% to 2.2, which is a decrease of 1.2 percentage points. Um, and it's also interesting to see that, you know, while women uh, report that uh, the same amount of women report that they have more than one uh, or one co-wife, uh, the percentage of men has actually decreased. Um, next, if we look at um, the demographics of age and how they relate with the women having more co-wives, we see that um, just in the 2017 survey, the highest proportion of women who reported having one or more co-wives was those aged 40 to 44. 6.2% uh, of them said that their husbands had um, more than one wife um, other than them. And then the lowest was the age group of 15 to 19, and which I feel like could be attributed to generally a lesser number of women getting married in these ages. So it makes sense that even a lesser proportion of them would have more than one COVA, especially because it's a much younger age. What interests me is that 45 to 49 year old age group and how the how decline how steep the decline is from 40 to 44 to then 45 to 49. It's um almost 3.4 percent. So I'd be interested to delve deeper into why that is so and what factors um are con contributing to that. Yes, I think with the exception of the age bracket of 45 to 49 it could be said that the likelihood of having one or more co-wives was increasing for women in Pakistan with age. However, given the exception of the 45 to 49 age bracket, that could not be a definitive trend that we apply to this data. Yeah, definitely. Like you, you could have, you know, very easily drawn a trend line, but then that last segment, that such a sharp decline also, it really makes you... Um, think about what the cultural factors are. Um, again, for the same data, if you look at time trends, we see that among women, um, for the 45 to 49 year old age group, um, uh, it was very high in the 1990s. So what we were just talking about, you know, how it's very strange that it's so so low. Um, it's also interesting to see that it has declined a lot over the years as well within that age group. It went from 8.7% in 1990 to around 2.8% in for, um, 2017, which is the steepest decline that we've seen across all age groups, across all years. Um, for the younger age groups from 15 to 29 year old, we also see 
um, relatively a decline from 1990 to 2017. There are some nuances where 25 year olds to 29 year olds, you know, there's a very slight increase from 2012 to 2017. But other than that, it's mostly like a downward um, sloping line. And then we see it increase in the middle ages again. So from 30 to 44 year olds, we see that generally if we compute from 1990 to 2018, we see that polygyny has increased over time for these age groups. Exactly. And again, the factor about not being able to draw any kind of inclusive trend comes into play because across ages, we cannot say that a decline has been, you know, observed considering that for the 30 to 34 year olds, there's been an increase for 35 to 39 years old, there's been an increase and then a decrease. We see an increase in the 40 to 44 year old bracket and a sharp decline in the 45 to 49 year old bracket. So these are very, very um, intriguing findings from the PDHS. Yeah, and, and polygyny is one of those factors, you know, like, so recently we talked about level of education, for example, or autonomy. I think polygyny is a lot more nuanced in that, um, you know, cultural and social factors do play, I think, a much larger part. But then um, looking at these variations across age groups, I'm just very interested to see, like, maybe a deeper dive into these factors and more qualitative data about um, why people are choosing to marry you know why men are choosing to marry more women and you know what other things there are that come into play um if we look at it useful here to have the male versus female comparative as well because maybe those comparatives weren't as applicable in forming trend analysis when we studied the previous pdhs findings but in polygamy there's a very sharp contrast between the numbers being reported amongst females versus male counterparts in any kind of polygamous marriage yeah definitely an example right now is again the graph by age over time for men and this is one of the first uh, pdhs trend data that we've seen that also takes responses from men and reports that and so it gives a very interesting contrast like you mentioned so we see that over the years um for 20 in 2012 we see an increasing trend except for the 40 to 44 year old so men in 2012 uh, reported by age a higher number of men reported being married to more than one woman um, in 2017, we also see sort of an increasing trend, but I wouldn't call it a trend because um, the 35 to 39 and the 40 to 44 year olds, again, you know, there are variations. It's more like a wave than a curve or a line. So, um, and then we see that, you know, there is barely any men with more than one co-wife in the 15 to 19 and 20 to 24 year age groups. I feel like that also um, can be a factor of just sample sizes or sampling. And also just the fact that, you know, um, there are lesser men who are getting married at a younger age. It's more common culturally to hear about younger women getting married, but usually even then the men are um, a few years older than them. So I think this finding of 0%, and then even in the 20 to 24 year age group, you know, there's 0.2% and then it declines to 0%. For men, but then for women, it's still like above 2.5% across the years for this age group. So it just shows the contrast in um, the numbers reported up until like the, from the 15 to 30 to 34 year old bracket for men is still lower than the numbers reported for the 15 to 24 year bracket for females. So that is very interesting. And the 15 to 24 year old men virtually having no polygynous marriages while a 15 to 19 year old female in Pakistan in married female in Pakistan still has a 1.6 percent likelihood of being in a polygynous marriage yeah definitely and I think it comes what comes into play again is just uh, the religious and social acceptance of men having uh, more than one wife and how that is practiced across Pakistan um like we can see more frequently than than one would think. Um, next, if we look at polygynous relationships among women who had education and you know the varying levels of education, we see that um, five percent of women with no education reported that their husbands had more than one wife. But then there's a very almost it gets halved as soon as women start getting education. So it goes from five to two point five percent, and then 
after that, over the different education periods and education levels, um, it stays more or less similar. There's very small percentage increases and decreases. So I'm very interested to see that, you know, like from no education, from complete illiteracy to somewhat illiteracy, there's a huge jump down. But then across literacy levels, there isn't much of a change. Yeah, it's almost forming like a U-shaped trend where no education is 5%, but primary and higher educations only have a 0.1% difference, while the lowest percentage being reported is by those within the middle income, uh, middle education level. Yeah, definitely. And again, like we said in the beginning, it's it's very um complex relationship that we see with demographic factors that we haven't seen in other um marriage related variables before that um so if we look at marriage trends according to um education levels over the years we see some similar findings we see that women with no education uh, regardless of the year they were the most um in in polygamous relationships and then obviously we see that it declined over the years but even then you know within primary education and within women with primary education it declined a lot more uh, but then and for women with middle and higher education, it increased over the years. And what's very interesting to me is this hysteric here, which says that, so um, in 1990, uh, secondary and higher education were not separate categories in the survey. So what this 2.3 represents here is women who have secondary or higher education who are in polygynous unions. So the 2.3 represents both secondary plus higher education of uh, women and it is still lower than the averages for 2012 and 2017 so essentially we could claim that there is a rising trend in the secondary education as well um, again if you have any thoughts on this Roja well I think this might be the first finding where we see some kind of consistency across years and across different brackets so for each of the waves, we can form a U-shaped trend, but definitely the exception of the 1990 data regarding secondary and higher education would have brought a different, you know, visualization to life. Yeah, and I'm sure we do see like a general trend upwards. But then again, what sticks out to me is that primary education where um, it has decreased a lot over the years. And I'm just interested interested to know whether it is just a factor of education or other factors like, um, you know, urban rural migration or just economic factors are something that is playing a role in this too. Yeah, so in like the 20 or so years between the first wave and the second wave, we see virtually no difference. But then in the five years between the second and third wave, there's a 1.2% decline. That's yeah. quite significant. Um, again, if you look at education levels um, of men and how that correlates with their uh, reporting of being in polygynous unions, we see that, again, men with no education in 2012 had the highest percentage of you know having more than one wife, and it steadily declines over time. Um, and we would have seen a similar trend for 2017, except for this, you know, middle... Uh, middle school education uh, segment of men in 2017 who have the highest level of polygyny across all the um, levels of education in 2017. So again, uh, you know, we see here that middle school education educated women have very low polygynous um, rates. And then we see that middle school educated men are reporting a lot higher levels of polygyny. So um, that is again also very interesting. Yeah, possibility could be that men who are educated in the middle level may be marrying women who have no education or only a primary education level compared to women who are being married, women having middle education level who may not be marrying men from the same education background. Yeah, you raise a very good point about how, you know, it's not a one on one to one mapping of education levels between genders. There is a lot of cultural factors where, you know, marriages between different wealth levels, between different education levels, between different age groups also exist. And then we see some of that reflected um, in these findings that we have from the from the PDHS. Yeah, 
Um, next, if we look at wealth levels and how those correspond with polygyny, again, very interesting findings. So we see that um, as one would expect for um, women in the lowest wealth quintile, they have by far the highest rate of being in polygynous relationships. In fact, it has increased by almost 22% uh, uh, from 2012 to 2017. I don't think this had data available in the 1990 service or point of reference is a five year or half a decade um, period. And even in just those five years, we see that women in the lowest income level, we see that you know their polygynous relationship uh, increased among them. And then what's very interesting here is that women in the highest wealth quintile also saw an increase, maybe not as much as those in the lowest quintile, but still like a 0.5% increase um, in having more than one or just having co-wives in general. And it's it's um, more intriguing because in all the other wealth levels, we see a decline. You know, it's not a huge decline in the middle income. It's the largest. But then overall, we see like a downward sloping um, trend line. But for the highest income level, again, we see that it's increased. So I'll just I'm very interested to see why that might be so. Again, there's nothing, there's no conclusive trend that we can form that relates your uh, wealth quintile for women against the likelihood of them being in polygynous marriages. As we can see, the data varies across wealth quintiles, across um, years. Yeah. So it is quite interesting. And it would be even more interesting if this was studied further further. Yeah, I think out of all the things that we've looked at, polygyny looks like something that is still prevalent over the years. And for some education levels and income levels and age groups, it's actually even more relevant today than it was maybe 20 or 30 years ago. So I would love to see more information and more research about this. Um, and so, but again, we can see that one thing we can see, say conclusively is that, you know, there is still a very stark difference between the lowest income level and then the rest of them. And then among them, we see smaller variations. Um, if you look at men who I reported... Men across wealth quintiles is also very, very interesting. So we've seen that in the 2012 wave, the likelihood of men uh, being involved in polygynous marriages increases with wealth quintile up until the fourth quintile and then decreases in the highest. Mm. However, in the 2017 data, we see the opposite. We see that there is a declining trend with an increase in wealth up until the fourth quintile, after which it increases. So I have no way of understanding how that's possible across just a difference of five years. Yeah, and, and I think some of it we can attribute to just, you know, the sampling um, and how many participants were actually interviewed from each wealth quintile. But that being said, you know, you can't attribute a 3% point uh, decrease to just sample. So there might be something else going on as well that um, I also can't quite put my finger on, but it's something, you know, it's just how complex social setups and cultural setups in Pakistan are. And this is a complete reversal over five years, which is, again, very interesting. And also among the lowest wealth quintile, we see for men that, you know, only 3% on average um, have more than one wife. But then for women, it's even the lowest is 4.7%. So it's almost double. So um, we can, I think, infer from that then th that there are more individual men in lower income levels and who are marrying more women um, per man. And I think that can be reflected in this data as well. But obviously, that is not causal um, inferences. They're just assumptions that we can make looking at these graphs because this is just raw data that has been visualized. And to get to more conclusive, like you said, results or... Um, analysis, we need to look at a lot more data and a lot more different qualitative factors as well. Um, when we talk about this complete reversal, we also see that in our regional graphs as well. Uh, but before we get to the trend, let's just look at 2017 and 18. And here we see that uh, Islamabad has the least polygynous um, prevalence among women. And again, I can we can attribute that to just the relative population size if of Islamabad because it is a city compared to entire provinces such as Balochistan and Fata, uh, where data might also be harder to come by for different reasons. Um, but then if you look at Punjab, KP and Sindh, we see that KP has 
Khyber Pakhtunkhwa has the next lowest level of polygyny and then followed by uh, Punjab and then Sin. So um, these are also interesting results. Again, we can't really say anything very conclusively, but I feel like wherever cultural ties are stronger, such as in maybe rural Sindh or rural Balochistan, we can maybe tie some of that to uh, these numbers as well. And then again, if you look at rural versus urban, I feel like one would assume, even before looking at these graphs, that there are more um, polygynous unions uh, in rural Pakistan than in urban. It's not a huge difference, just of 1%, but it still exists. And I believe like the percentages reported in Balochistan and Fata would attribute to the fact that they are predominantly rural areas. Yeah, definitely. And then with that, again, comes, you know, um, a lot more other factors too. And I think in urban regions, it's sort of explanatory in the sense that there are a lot more opportunities for women to get exposure. You would, you can also relate um, urbanity with higher education levels to some extent too. So I feel like com comparing this to the trends that we saw earlier, it, it makes sense intuitively. Um, but then if you look at the trends, something very interesting comes up, um, especially in the rural and urban setups. We see that um, in rural Pakistan, over time, uh, prevalence of polygyny for women has decreased from 5.2% to 3.1%. So it has increased by almost 2%. But then in urban Pakistan, uh, we see that it has decreased by Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it has decreased by 2%. But then in urban Pakistan, we see that it has decreased from 2.9 to 2.1 percent, which isn't uh, a very large decrease um, compared to rural. So we see that you know there are other factors that are um, maybe just the modernization of a lot of rural regions um, is also playing a part. And then again, when we see in Balochistan, we see that the sharpest decline um, has been in Balochistan, where 12.1 percent women in 1990 claimed to have more than, you know, have co-wives, but then it has declined very steeply to 5.8% um, in 2018, but it's still the highest uh, compared to all the other provinces and regions in 2017. I think also across rural and urban trends, we can at least form a declining trend when we see the data reported for rural areas. However, urban areas has all like the numbers reported for women in polygamous marriages in urban areas has also varied across the three ways. Hmm. We do see a trend for declining rates across all other provinces except for Punjab and Fata. Yeah, and I also be interested to see like the data for uh, Islamabad and Fata was not collected in 1990. But I just I'm just curious to see in these areas what the trends looked like back 30 years um ago. But yes, we do see that in Punjab it has increased, but in the rest of the provinces over time it has decreased with the sharp, sharpest uh decline being in Balochistan. And again in Fata it has also increased by more than 2.5%. So um there's also a pretty sharp increase. Um we see a similar declining trend in the numbers reported for men across the years. However, um, we do not see the similarity of men, the likelihood of men being in polygynous relationships increasing in Punjab and Fata. Hmm. So across the provinces, we see that there has been a consistent decline across the two waves of 2012 and 2017. Um, we don't have the data for uh, 1990 for men in polygynous marriages, but overall across rural, urban, and all regional divides, there has been a decrease in the likelihood of men marrying um, more than one wife or having more than one wife. And the contrast is also very interesting that 0.8% of men in FATA are in polygynous relationships, while 5.7% of females in Fata are in polygynous mm. relationships. That is a almost 8%, if 7 or 8% increase, yeah. or, you know, by a factor of seven times. So that's interesting. Yeah, I was also looking at Fata, the numbers for Fata, and that also, you know, um, intrigues me, but Again, we can attribute some of it to sampling, but not that much of an increase or difference. In Balochistan, it again maps 
you know um with the female numbers as well it makes sense that the female numbers would be higher than the male numbers considering um on average one for each male in a polygynous relationship there would minimum be two women um but if you look at rural and urban trends for men with more than one wives and if you look at um urban and rural areas we see that in 2012 there were more men in the urban areas in rural uh, polygynous relationships than men in rural areas so this has somewhat reversed in 2017 where now there are more men in the rural regions who have more than one wife compared to men in the urban regions um also casting this with the data on females this would lead us to believe i think Two findings may be, you know, taken from it. One, there is a likelihood that men in Fata may be marrying a higher number of wives compared to other regions, given the factor by which we're comparing um, within this relationships with, uh, amongst uh, female respondents and male respondents. And then the second is that um, when we have that number of 4% in 2012 um, for urban in men, that is also possible that, um, and that only relates to 3.3% urban women, while 3.9% rural women in 2012 were in polygynous relationships. Hmm. There is also the possibility that urban men may be in relation polygynous marriages with rural women. That makes a lot of sense, especially because over time we do see a lot of rural to urban migration where a lot of men, especially men, move from villages to um, cities and maybe to, you know, uh, maintain ties with the families or just cultural values. They might choose to still marry women in back in their villages, for example. So that makes a lot of sense. And also one thing I would like to point out is just the definition of rurality and urbanity because um, over time, the lines have been blurring a lot because even in villages now, you know, you have internet and you have a lot of lot more facilities, um, especially villages that are bordering cities and bordering urban regions. So where that line comes and since, since this is self-reported data, I think it is also very interesting to remember that um, these things might are subjected to some level of subjectivity as well. Yes, and I think another thing to consider is that um, at the time of data collection, one, one may be temporarily residing in either rural or urban areas, or even in different province, which they which not, might not be the place that they identify as belonging to. So the likelihood of that being a discrepancy among male respondents would be higher compared to female respondents, because we do see this um, domesticity amongst females in Pakistan. So I think that's also something that we need to consider when um, going through this data. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, we do see that over time, this domesticity has decreased where a lot more women are moving out, which can also explain some of the uh, nuances that we've observed in the data over time. Um, and that concludes our discussion of polygyny over time um, as uh, from the data of the Pakistan Demographic and Health Survey. We'll be continuing this discussion about time trends from other categories of the survey and sharing our analysis on it. Thank you, Roja, for joining me today. Goodbye. Okay.